I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to start working with Apple Loops in Logic. I've got two tracks in this project, and what we're going to then do is to supplement them with some Apple Loops to bring some extra sort of spice and flavour to this track. So here's how the track sounds right now. So I want to add two elements to uh, this track. One is going to be drum based and the other one is a sort of separate synth part that I've got in mind. And what I'm going to do is to come over to the right hand side of uh, Logic's environment here and click on the loops button, which is here. And this gives me access to Logic's loop browser full of individual Apple loops. And these come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And the way that we can actually go and access the content here um, is through a number of different ways. First of all, we can search by instrument. So if I click on the instrument tab here, I get a matrix then of the assorted instruments that are available to me. I can click on percussion, tambourine, electric guitar, electric pianos and assorted other options here which will then narrow the searches down to those instruments. Alternatively I can search by genre so if I want to decide that I want to add a tech house loop or I want to uh, grab even uh, a country music file to add to this project I can do that as well. So there are a range of different ways in which I can work. So firstly what I'm going to do is to select uh, an instrument and I'm going to come into the synths options. And the way that the Apple Loops work is that I can actually audition these in real time. As I click on these individual waveforms, I'm going to hear those loops playing back. I can control their volume down here as well. So if I want to hear them quietly, I can turn them down. And then as I click through these assorted options, we'll hear how these loops work until hopefully we'll find something that feels like it might be quite good. <laughs> Okay, this synth line feels like it might have something about it which is useful, but before we start dragging it into the project and seeing exactly how it might work, there are some crucial things about Apple Loops that are worth knowing as well. So first of all, I can see how many beats long this is. It's 16 beats long, which means it's basically a four bar file. I can also see the original tempo at which this loop was created. My project is at 126 beats per minute, and I can see here that the tempo of the loop speed that uh, this loop was originally captured at is at 79 beats per minute. But the way that Apple Loops work is that the host tempo, the tempo of my project, is being applied to this loop. So when I drag and drop this into my project, what I'm going to discover is that it's following the tempo. In other words, I haven't got to time stretch it or make it faster or slower to fit the tempo of my project. It's going to do that automatically. And the other thing I can see is that the key in which this was originally recorded is G. Now, my project isn't in G, so we're going to see whether or not that's a problem or how we can overcome that problem in just a second. So how do I make this loop part of my project? Well, um, Logic makes this very easy. All I have to do is to click on the file over here and simply drag it across into this area. And you can see that straight away this region appears and I can decide exactly where to put it. And I haven't even got to set up a track for it. Simply by dragging it into this space, as you can see within the main page, uh, uh, page it says here, drag Apple Loops here. And by doing that, a track will be automatically created for any loop that I bring in. So if I now press play, we're going to hear this loop as part of this project and we'll see straight away whether or not we've got any problem with its key. The fact that it's exactly four bars long is an encouraging sign as far as its tempo is concerned. Clearly, Logic has analysed it and made it the tempo of my project. Here's how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, so the key is jarring, it's not right for this particular project. But not only do Apple Loops give me the capacity to change tempo so that they're following the tempo of my project, I can easily transpose them too. The way that this audio file has been sort of tagged allows me to take its pitched component and to change that without changing its length. 
So up at the top left hand corner here, I can transpose this file. And it feels to me like if we were to go up a couple of steps here, we'd end up with a loop which is going to be better in tune with the piece as well as still in time. Okay, and that is working. So now we've got something which is in tune. You can see that the transpose value that I've added two semitones, that's two steps up on the keyboard effectively. But remember, this isn't a MIDI region. I haven't played this in. This is an audio file that I'm changing in real time. Now, to be honest, I like the little bleep within this loop, but I don't like the little fills that are happening at the end of bar two and at the end of bar four. So what else can I do with an Apple loop to make this feel a little bit more like it's mine and not just dragged in from the loop browser? Well, first thing I could do would be to chop this region up. I'm going to select T for the toolbar, and we're going to come into the scissors tool. And what this allows me to do is to make a chop within this audio file so that I can select the bit I want to use and get rid of the bit that I don't. Now in a loop like this, this is very straightforward. I just really want to use the first bar four times. So we get this little uh, blip that's just happening on the downbeats. So I'm going to click at the beginning of bar two, and that's going to allow me to chop this section, which I can then throw away using the backspace key. I can then come back to T, select uh, my pointer tool, and simply copy using Alt and drag to create four repeats of this individual file. So what I've done here is to take a synth loop, import it, get it in tune by using the transpose feature, and now I've chopped it um, in order to select the bit that I want to use. And now we just have a little sort of insistent uh, synth pulse happening on all four beats of the bar. Within the mixer, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn this down a little bit so it's a bit less insistent. We've just got a more subtle um, effect happening in the background of the track. Now, actually, the way that this piece unfolds, it might be interesting to chop this again at this point and to change the pitch of this section here, where these chords change at the beginning of bar three. This is jarring a little bit here. And I'm wondering if actually going back to the original pitch on these notes might be quite good. So what I've done is I've chopped this region again here and I've used the lasso tool simply to draw a box around these notes here and I've taken the transpose value away. If I click on one of the earlier regions, we'll see that it's still there. So what I can do with Apple Loops isn't just to apply a transpose to the entire track. I can chop up into individual regions and select a transposition value for each of them. And that's working quite nicely. We've just got a little bit of variation there as well. Again, it's still quite loud, so let's just turn it down a touch more. What I'm then going to do is to return to the Apple loops over here, and I'm going to reset this. I don't want to look at synths anymore, and by getting rid of my filtered selections, I go back to the full range of options that are here. And this time, I'm going to come into the Beats menu. Again, what I can do as the track plays back is to audition a whole range of individual grooves or beats and just to see if I can find something that feels like it's going to work well. Let's go back to the top. We're in cycle mode, so it's going to just keep playing round, and I can audition some of these in real time.
Okay, it's very interesting hearing this halftime groove, which we've just found within this particular rhythm. And you can hear how the whole context of the piece changes depending on which groove you select. I'm gonna go for this halftime groove. I'm gonna drag it in here. As before, straight away, Logic will create a new track for me. And of course, now that it's part of the arrangement, I've got much more control over its overall volume. So let's just import this and just copy this round a couple of times. And that's working quite nicely. We've got a lot of power now at the beginning of each um, bar beat. At the down, on the downbeat of each bar, we've got a lot of power. There's not a whole lot on the backbeat, actually. It might be quite nice to find another loop where maybe we can um, sort of add some extra uh, power to the sort of backbeat of this particular loop. So again, let's just press play and listen to a couple of uh, loops again and see if we can find something that feels like it might support it nicely um, on uh, halfway through the bar. Okay, this feels like it might work quite well, not necessarily as a whole loop, but as a sort of an extra bit to add in certain spots. So let's get rid of the mixer so we can see this a little bit more clearly. Here's our original synth part, here's our main groove, and here is our new little loop which is coming in at this point. Now, I'm not interested in using this new loop in uh, at the beginning of the bar, I want to use it from the sort of midway point as a kind of fill into each new bar. So what I'm gonna do is to grab my scissors tool again, remember that's T to bring up the toolbar, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click um, on uh, the third beat of the bar, and again on the downbeat of the next bar to isolate this little area here. Let's throw away the rest of the loop, and let's just see what happens when we copy this into beat three of each of these individual bars. Now, of course, it's gonna be quite repetitive because we're using the same section of audio, but I think this is gonna provide us with a nice little fill going into the downbeat of each bar. And that's working really well. Remember, what we could do as well would be to program our own drums, bring in more Apple loops, and begin to flesh out arrangement in a whole series of ways. And as we've seen, we're not tied to using the whole of a loop if we don't want to. We've selected individual bits, we've transposed um, bits for the pitched synth that we've chosen to make sure that it fits better into our arrangement. And here with this last little fill loop, we've just clicked on a particular area, got rid of the rest of the loop, just to provide a little bit of audio candy in the gaps between our main loop.